83 to 98. After evening showers or heavy thunderstorms in the area tonight, clearing skies a bit. Then tomorrow, a partly sunny start, then afternoon thunderstorms. Wednesday's high, 84 to 89. Strong evening thunderstorm tomorrow night. Thursday, partly sunny start, showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon, high 82 to 86. For AccuWeather.com, I'm Sally Sherman. Welcome to Shore Talk. Shore Talk is designed to keep you better informed of what's going on here on Virginia's beautiful eastern shore. Now, here's Shore Talk. Time now is 1238 p.m. and it is time for today's Shore Talk. Joining me from Bayside Chiropractic, also laser and physiotherapy. We're joined today by Dr. Ed Bull as well as Jan and Bull. And the topic for today's discussion, the autonomic nervous system. So welcome, gang. How y'all doing this afternoon? Great. Good, Will. Thank Wonderful. you guys for being here. So, summer's, y'all staying cool? Summer's finally Trying. here, and I was uh, waiting for spring <laughs> and waiting for summer so long. I'm not complaining one bit. I love it. It's boating weather. I'm right there with you, yeah. to be honest with you. So, <laughs> we've been doing quite a bit of boating so far, so I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, we've had a, not, I didn't think, well, we haven't had the best weekend weather. This past one was pretty nice, but mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of been unsettled. You know, a little bit of showers and storms, but. The dog days will be here before you know it. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, the bay has been smooth as glass pretty much the last three weekends that, that we've been out, and that's pretty unusual. So it's it's been very nice enjoying the beginnings of summer. We really didn't have much of a spring. I think we went from winter and rainy weather kind of right into the summer. So it's been it's been very nice to finally get some warm weather. Today, I wanted to start with uh, some of the interesting patients that have come in over the past uh, few weeks since our last show. Uh, An interesting patient that came in last Thursday, as a matter of fact, um, came in with severe pain. When a patient is in this much pain, I kind of categorize it as the patient is in distress, uh, had difficulty walking, um, couldn't really sit down, couldn't stand up, uh, just pain I would describe, some patients describe as a 11 or 12 out of 10, 10 being the most severe pain. So she had uh, had been hurting for a while and had tried some medications. Uh, those weren't overly successful, so she came in in, in distress and in severe pain um, we did some class 4 laser on her and uh, adjusted her and did a little stretching and she left probably a half an hour later um, with a pain level of 7 out of 10 so the distress factor was settled down somewhat I met her back in the office Friday afternoon which were were normally not open on Fridays but for patients like that that have to make it through a long weekend uh, if we're in town, I'll usually meet up there, and um, her pain level was down to about a five, and she had a much more comfortable weekend. She came in yesterday, and she was pain level was down to a point where she was uh, able to focus and able to function. So patients like that are um, that come in uh, that are desperate and really in distress. Uh, those are the type of patients that are really our cheerleaders, you know, people that haven't uh, experienced chiropractic before or it's been a long time since they've been to a chiropractor and they come in and you give them a incredible, almost immediate relief like that. Um, those make the best patients. Those, you know, a lot of our business in Cape Charles and here on the shore is by word of mouth and those type of patients uh, really help sing our praises. So She looked like a different person yesterday. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't. When she came in um, Thursday, oh, my gosh, I couldn't hardly do anything with her. Yeah. Oh, just, it's hard because I've been there. I know what it's like. I'm like, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm trying to stretch her, and mm-hmm. I, I finally, I, said, I can't. We, we just, she went to the point where we could do anything. Very little stretching. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, but, yeah, yesterday, 
whole world of difference. Oh, yeah. I'm like, you're smiling today. You totally. You can tell she feels better. Total different personality. Yeah. You, she was snappy and grumpy and that, <laughs> that first day, and it seemed like no matter what I tried, um, it wasn't taking enough of the edge off, but um, the laser and the ice really got it settled down. Well, so. she even used a heating pad. Oh, yeah. Too. And that's one thing we've talked about on yeah. numerous radio shows. If If you're out there and you've got an acute injury, or even chronic, most of your chronic inflammatory conditions, um, using heat feels good at the time, but it just increases the chronicity. You're, you're taking a, a joint or tissue that's already inflamed, and you're putting heat on it. You're bringing more inflammation, so it makes the condition worse overall. That's why we, 99% of our patients, we will use ice on. So we did some laser on her. We used some ice. Friday she came in, a little better mood, and she was just a totally different person yesterday. Yeah. So, um, satisfaction. That's just uh, if I can take a patient like that, and and uh, the medications haven't worked, and get them almost immediate relief. Very satisfying. <clears throat> the other patient, very similar, um, sacroiliitis. We've talked about that on past shows. That sacroiliac joint in your Right or left side of your low back gets inflamed, irritates those sciatic nerves on some occasions. Same, same issue. She had sciatica about a month ago. Um, tried prednisone and tried some medications and uh, didn't really help. Symptoms got worse. You know, when you have symptoms, that's your body telling you that, hey, we've got an issue. We've got a problem. So instead of uh, taking medications to cover up the symptoms, why not address the structural cause? So she would, she heard over the past month, um, she was actually referred in by her nurse practitioner after uh, the medications didn't work. She came in in, in pretty severe pain, had sacroiliitis. We, uh, last Thursday, um, adjusted her, her low back, got the sacroiliac joint unlocked, and same thing almost immediate relief of pain after a month of severe pain she came in yesterday for her first uh for her second treatment and she said uh my weekend was so much better so well if this if it's locked up that medication is not going to do anything absolutely not yeah yeah once the si joint god designed to move one to three millimeters once that si joint locks up the body inflames all the tissue that surrounds it for the most part normally until you unlock that si joint it's just a never-ending vicious cycle the inflammation increases as the inflammation increases it locks the si joint even more the si joint up locking even more brings more inflammation so unlocking that si joint is is key and, and critical and we do also did some class four laser to help drive that inflammation out of there right yeah so another interesting patient that came in over the past two weeks a referral from uh one of our patients and one of our friends that lives down a um, little bit past O'Call, so he comes a long way uh, to Cape Charles to get worked on, but we got his uh, his neck and low back moving much better. He told a, a friend of his um, that's actually been hurting since 2010. Can you imagine, Will, eight years of issues with your low back, not being able to stand for more than 15 minutes at a time without leg pain and aching and numbness in the feet. So we put him on... Uh, Decompression table, I think we worked on him, what, Janet, this morning was the third trip? Third time. He was last Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. And then he came in today. For his third trip. So he yeah. said already uh, his pain in his feet, pain in his low back, he's able to stand now uh, without having Squat down. Pain. He told me today, usually like he squats down and washes his car. He usually has like his tires. He has to get on a stool. He said, I squatted right down today. Yeah, see, that's. Yeah. That's incredible. And I said, those are the little things you just don't quality of think life about. Yeah. issues. So we're doing uh, we're doing some class four laser for his peripheral neuropathy, getting rid of the some of the issues in his feet, and the uh, spinal decompression for the degeneration in his low back. But already on the third visit, a lot of those chronic symptoms for over eight years are decreasing. Another patient, uh, one of our vets. That was in Vietnam, had some issues with Agent Orange, also has, uh, has, help me out here, Janet, 
I just went blank. Well, he's got oh, peripheral he's neuropathy. Yeah, he's got peripheral neuropathy. Yeah. Uh, he's got lumbar degeneration, um, and he's diabetic. So he's really got the, the triple threat there, the uh, three causes of the neuropathy. So severe, significant pain in his low back and uh, very bad balance. So we've worked on him, I think, four or five times at this point. Yeah, he was referred by... I think a surgeon, what was it, the surgeon yeah. uh, across the bay? surgeon across the bay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> referred him for some work, and mm-hmm. uh, after that first visit, the uh, the symptoms in his low back uh, decreased significantly. He, he came in and uh, had difficulty walking more than, I would say, probably 50 yards uh, because of the, the pain in his low back and the weakness in his legs. Um, and the instability and balance issues. So after I worked on them the first time, I said, I want you to walk. If you come out of our office and you take a right, our office is about two and a half blocks from the beach. So I said, I want you to walk down to the beach and back, test it out. So they were amazed at the improvement just after that first treatment. So now he's walking about three quarters of a mile, and this has been in over the past three weeks. He's increased his ability to walk that kind of distance. So I think we're going to be doing some um, peripheral neuropathy laser treatment on him. We're getting his low back stabilized. Uh, and he's actually had some toes amputated. So his diabetes was bad enough that they had already cut a couple of toes off. Um, so not only are we going to help his balance and the numbness and his general neuropathy symptoms, but we will eliminate the need to remove any future toes and that's huge for somebody with diabetes they just the the tissue won't heal and that laser uh, increases circulation increases cell permeability increases the body's natural healing processes by about 40 or 50 percent so there's no doubt in my mind that him not healing is going to be a we're not going to have that as a future issue right so significant uh, results one more patient that I thought was pretty interesting came in and uh <clears throat> his daughter was actually uh is a physical therapist and he had some swelling in his wrist and he said it's been there since uh since the end of April and he said I had my daughter check out my wrist and there was no fracture <coughs> but it's you know the the pain and the lack of motion is starting to really become aggravating so I think we've done what two laser treatments on his wrist Two, I think. Two, yep. And the uh, inflammation is already settling down. Uh, the motion is improved. The pain is decreased. But the interesting part, um, the cervical spine, his neck was actually what was causing the inflammation in the wrist. So, yeah, so not only are we doing laser on the wrist, but we're also, uh, of course, doing some work on his neck. But that kind of, kind of leads us into our topic for today. Um, the autonomic nervous system. An autonomic nervous system is really um, what we consider the automatic functions of the body that the brain controls through the spinal cord. Now, you have, we talk a lot about the motor and sensory nerves, and that's the the main part of the nervous system that most people are aware of and associate with, and that's muscle movement, muscle control, and then sensation, um, pain, tickling, uh, touch, sensitivity, those, those are things that most people attribute um, to their nervous system. But there's a whole different part of the nervous system called the autonomic or automatic nervous system. And this is automatic nervous system is the most fascinating part of the nervous system in my mind. And this is, um, this is a part of the nervous system that really showed me, proved to me, how incredible of a engineer God was in designing our body. If you take, Will, <clears throat> I know we talked about it, and it's been a while since we did a show on the autonomic nervous system, but the two most primitive functions of our body, what would you think those would be? I would bet respiration and yes. your heartbeat. Absolutely. Will, you are sharp, and <laughs> we were talking about – with your dad on the last show, uh, yeah, I tried to stump him, and he's, uh, I know he got, uh, you got your brains from him because he answered most well, of our questions. Well, that's terrifying, but anyway, I'll <laughs> <have to> compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But see, a heart rate and respiration, <coughs> excuse me. Now consider if if your heart rate and your breathing, your respiration were not automatic. If you had to consciously tell your diaphragm, contract, relax, take a breath, heartbeat, what else would you get done? You couldn't sleep. You couldn't eat. The only function you would have is controlling your diaphragm and controlling your heartbeat. So just our two most primitive functions, look how incredible uh, of an engineer <clears throat> God designed, how incredible he was. So we're going to talk a lot today about um, functions of the autonomic nervous system and how intricately we designed, we were designed. And <clears throat> the key to today's topic is uh, all of these autonomic or automatic nervous system functions are controlled by the brain through the spinal cord and different levels of the spinal cord control different automatic autonomic nervous system functions so i wanted to kind of start with <clears throat> the heart and most people are not aware if you took your heart out of your chest here's another question will and you put it in a you set it on the table here what would that heart muscle do pump it would actually would it would pump and the heart muscles own inherent rhythm the rhythm of uh the electrical rhythm in that heart its own heartbeat it wants to beat at 200 200 200 beats a minute now why would 200 beats a minute be detrimental to the body um the heart beating regularly at 200 beats a minute it wouldn't last very long the heart would would be overworking itself it would be over pumping blood so your brain, your nervous system knows that that 200 beats a minute would be detrimental, so it slows the heart rate. The normal resting average heart rate should be about 60 to 65 beats a minute. So what in the body slows that heart, that inherent rhythm down from 200 beats a minute to about 60 to 65 beats a minute? The brain. The brain automatically slows that heart down, but and 60 to 65 beats a minute, is normal <clears throat> for if you're resting but say you go out and you decide to uh exercise you decide to cut your grass uh you decide to take a jog 60 or 65 beats a minute is not going to supply enough oxygen to your tissues it's not going to supply enough blood to your tissues so the brain automatically monitors what they call oxygen saturation levels so say you go out and you start exercising your brain notices that, hey, the, the amount of oxygen that I'm getting to the tissues, the amount of oxygen that I'm picking up, the red blood cells should normally pick up four oxygen molecules as they go through the lungs. So that those four oxygen molecules, if you're exercising, are not enough at 65 beats a minute. So the brain calls up the heart, and in this case, it's T1 to T3, upper thoracic segments, and it says, hey, I, I notice you're... You're speeding up down there. <clears throat> um, we need to get you speeding up even more because the oxygen saturation levels are dropping. So you need to, to beat harder. You need to beat faster. We need to get some more oxygen to the tissues, to the soft tissues of the body, so the muscles. So the heart speeds up based on that. So your brain automatically regulates uh, blood pressure, heart contractility, uh, oxygen saturation level based on your exertion level and that happens automatically your your body monitors that many times per second based on your exertion level so that that type of monitoring system that type of negative and positive feedback system in our body that god inherently designed that type of thing just fascinates me another thing the lungs the lungs uh have to pass more oxygen based on your exertion level that happens automatically once again uh, t1 to t3 in the upper cervical area also has a big effect on both of those organs um, via one of the cranial nerve cranial nerve 10 called the vagus nerve very important part of the spine that we're going to talk about a little bit later <clears throat> the stomach some people uh, don't realize how important the stomach is as far as our digestive processes. Will, do you remember um, stomach produces a, 
hydrochloric acid, do you remember how strong uh, the pH level is of that stomach acid? No, I do not. It's a, <laughs> I'll it's, be entirely honest it's, with you. It's a two. And just to give you an idea, uh, water has a pH of seven. pH of six is ten times stronger than seven. Five is a hundred times stronger. Four is a thousand times stronger. So think about how strong stomach acid at a pH of 2 is. Your stomach produces acid based on, uh, automatically based on the amount of protein that you take in. So a stomach acid at a level of pH level of 2 is so strong that every four hours on average, your stomach produces a new inner cell lining. Just incredible how intricate God designed our body. So based on how much protein you ate, number one. Number two, did you eat protein? Uh, your, your brain should regulate stomach acid production. But if you have a structural misalignment in the spine, then the brain and the stomach can't properly communicate. The stomach will overproduce stomach acid. That would be heartburn or indigestion. It will underproduce stomach acid. But unfortunately, when patients experience those symptoms, most of them don't seek out a chiropractor, they start on an antacid. So so now you have uh, like Tums, Prilosec, Rolaids, Zantac. You're taking a uh, antacid that is designed to neutralize stomach acid for a 24-hour period. So for a 24-hour period, you have little to no protein digestion on a molecular level. Um, and this really aggravates uh, systemic arthritis. Chronic arthritis is greatly aggravated by taking an acids if you read the label on most of those uh the label says don't take for more than two weeks at a time and I, we have patients come in that have been on them for years so perfect uh example of uh how the body can go awry when you have structural misalignments in the spine and it affects that autonomic nervous system just fascinating stuff um the liver liver very interesting organ the liver is responsible for filtering the blood the liver also produces most of our digestive enzymes people with a lot of chronic uh, digestive issues um, have issues with their liver patients that are on uh, cholesterol medication statin drugs very harmful to your liver that's why they check your liver enzymes at least twice a year if you're on a statin medication to make sure they're they're not damaging your liver and we've we've talked on previous shows about um the limited benefits of your statin medications particularly if your cholesterol level is 250 or less it only decreases your risks of uh having heart issues uh heart attack having a stroke by one and a half percent 1.5 percent and the studies out recently uh, the minimum uh, amount that taking a statin medication increases your risks of breast cancer is, is twofold, and the most that I've read is eightfold. So, and, so if you're on a statin medication and your cholesterol level is 250 or less, you're anywhere from two times more likely to eight times more likely uh, to get cancer. So what I've recommended on previous shows uh, – Paleocardiologist by Dr. Jack Wolfson. I recommend most of my most of my patients get it. Um, buy the book. Go on Amazon. Educate yourself about a lot of the medication that you're taking and is it beneficial or not. Now I'll say, I'll be one of the first ones to say if you've got blood pressure issues, uh, you need to be on blood pressure medication. But a lot of the other medications out there, um, a lot of times the side effects are more detrimental than having the disorder that you're taking the medication for. So getting back to liver, minimum functions per second. Will, we've talked about this on previous shows. Um, do you remember, what do you think the minimum amount of functions per second the liver is involved in? This is incredible. 41 functions minimum per second. That's that's just incredible. Now, think about it. you got heart rate going on. you got respiration going on. You got the lunch you just ate, just ate. Your digestive system is is being controlled autonomically by that automatically by that autonomic nervous system. 
and your liver's carrying out a minimum of 41 functions per second plus all that other stuff going on the body is just god incredible engineer and designing our bottom that just blows me away 41 functions minimum per second that shows you folks how important uh not only autonomic nervous system is but the liver is to the body we uh used to do it a lot more we have some patients now do what's called a liver gallbladder flush but but it's an overnight cleanse of the liver and cleanse of the gallbladder if you have uh issues with gallstones um, I encourage you to call us and get a copy of the liver gallbladder flush. You can, instead of, in most cases, instead of getting your gallbladder removed, you can do that flush. My mom was having gallbladder attacks pretty severely. They wanted her to have her gallbladder removed. She called me up. That's when she was still a pharmacist here on the shore, and we were practicing in South Carolina. She called me up and said, hey, I want you to fax me. I was back when fax machines were around. I want you to fax me a copy of that liver gallbladder flush. So she did the flush. Uh, she did her overnight. No more issues with the gallbladder. So they didn't have to do the gallbladder removal surgery. So liver, very important uh, part of the autonomic nervous system organs that, that are innervated by the autonomic nervous system. Another <clears throat> important uh, organ that's controlled by uh, autonomic nervous system is the kidneys and the adrenal glands. Now, everybody nowadays, uh, their adrenal glands are overtaxed, overworked, uh, zapped out by stress. You know, our, our adrenal glands are fight or flight response. Uh, thousands of years ago, if we uh, were getting chased or attacked by an animal, we had to decide very quickly uh, whether we were going to fight or whether we we're going to run. And the adrenal glands, whether you got to fight or whether you got to run, they immediately cut off blood supply to your internal organs, and they they route that blood supply to your muscles so that you can fight or you can run. Well, stress also activates those adrenal glands. It um, overtaxes the adrenal glands. You're cutting off blood supply uh, to your internal organs, which affects the overall health of the internal organs. Uh, it also causes cortisol production, so you're going to store more fat because of the cortisol production. But those adrenal glands are innervated by that autonomic nervous system. Very important. Male and female organ functions, the bladder. So think about all the organ functions uh, that are controlled automatically by that autonomic nervous system. Another one that I thought about this morning, um, think about the intricate processes will involved with um, when a female gets pregnant, the, the development of that baby in the uterus, in the womb, all affected by autonomic nervous system control. And this is one of, one of the things that I tell our female uh, patients, especially the first pregnancy. If you're under chiropractic care in your first pregnancy, average time in labor is less than two hours under chiropractic care, average time in labor, not under chiropractic care for your first child is, is over 11 hours. So it makes a huge difference on um, re the ligaments that uh, suspend the uterus, suspend the placenta, those being able to relax, number one. Number two has a huge effect on um, how well the pelvis can dilate, the angle of the pelvis. So for... Uh, first-time pregnant females makes a huge difference uh females with uh their second or or more pregnancies the whole process just goes uh more easily there's a reason why we have such a high rate of c-section births in the united states we've got the highest in the world and it has to do with uh lack of exercise what we eat uh nobody gets adjusted the stress levels so you can take a, a natural uh, procedure that giving natural birth, uh, it's a natural thing. Mammals everywhere do it. People everywhere do it. But because of our lifestyle, a lot of times it turns into a crisis, and that's when they have to jump in and do a C-section. So, What if the baby's breech? I'd heard years ago. Absolutely. Someone had told me, one of the girls, I guess, in, uh -huh. in our clinic before, yeah. Um, 
that her baby was breached. Yeah, there's she'd a, gotten chiropractic care. There's a technique for rotating, yeah. for turning a breached baby. Right. It's a, a <laughs> chiropractic adjustment specifically for doing that. Um, and that's something that most people would not associate with chiropractic care being able to help. But it uh, that particular adjustment affects the tension on um, the ligaments that suspend the pel- pelvis and uh, attach the uterus. And, yeah, that's something very well, interesting. Well, it's like you've had um, one of the couples um, that were patients of ours in South Carolina, and I don't remember if it was her or him, they said, um, yeah, Dr. Bull um, helped me get pregnant. And I just kind of looked at it. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> that could and I have, guess the expression on my yeah. face, she's like, oh, no, I don't mean like that. But just with, I guess, chiropractic and things that you yeah. were doing, she was having problem with fertility. Right. Yeah. They, they were having fertility issues and had had done some of the <laughs> fertility treatments with with no luck. Um, <laughs> and it was her. It was her pelvis was uh, innervation to uh fallopian tubes uh innervation uh to all the female organs is through part of it is through that autonomic nervous system by adjusting her low back and she had always had issues with her low back you know that was her body telling you hey you've got some structural issues here so i think i worked on her maybe a month and about a month later she got pregnant so very interesting things that most people would not associate uh with chiropractic care I, i got a quick question if i can you know, the patient that we have and her and her mom come in, they're from out of town and they were here working on the house they were trying to sell. Oh, yes, 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 absolutely. An unusual, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait, has uh-huh. an unusual condition and she'll just pass out. She's very sensitive and yeah. she'll just pass out. So her and her mom were in the room with me the other day and I had my hands on her shoulder and I was working on her a little bit, lasering her neck. And she just kind of reached back and touched. She's like, can you hold off on that just a minute? I think I'm going to pass out. And she did. She went so, out just like I that. I mean, quick. Uh-huh. So I just I looked at her mom, and I was like, I'll be right back. <laughs> so I walked in, Ed had a patient, and I was like, um, I need you. <laughs> He's like, did she pass out? I was like, yes. So he said, start tapping on her. What was it? The side of her. Yeah, transverse process yeah. of Atlas to first vertebrae. And I walked in, and her mom was doing that, and Ed walked in with the adjusting tool. And just started doing it, and she popped right out of it immediately. Yeah. So, um, and I it, didn't know if that had anything to do with oh, the absolutely. brain. And to explain the neurology of that, yeah. going back to the vagus nerve, cranial yeah. nerve 10 controls uh, heart rate, controls respiration. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a matter of stimulating uh, the brain stem. And within two or three seconds, uh, uh, unbelievable. she was back wide awake. And her mom said most of the time when she has an issue where she pass, passes out, she's out for an hour and a half or more. Yeah. This so, was like, it was seconds. Yeah. That's how dramatic uh, the autonomic nervous system is and how it responds to uh, chiropractic adjustment. And, and getting back to the brainstem, the brainstem has 12 cranial nerves and under autonomic nervous system control, once again, eyesight, smell taste uh hearing facial muscle control control of the immune system is in the brain stem all of those uh drainage of the ear all of those factors are controlled by the brain uh through that spinal cord and specifically through the autonomic nervous system so hopefully today uh, our listeners got uh a good understanding of some of the innovation of the autonomic nervous system how important and how intricate it our autonomic nervous system is and more importantly um how good how god designed our body don't take uh your spine don't take your nervous system for granted you know we've got an incredible uh tool we've got an incredible body that uh that god gave us so take care of it and appreciate it that's right Janet, you want to give the contact information for Bayside Chiropractic? Uh, yes, email um, Bayside Chiropractic of CC at gmail.com and uh, telephone 331 1190. All right, All right. that's uh, Janet and Dr. Ed Bull, Bayside Chiropractic. Appreciate you guys stopping by today. Thank Great, you, thank Will. you, Will. Thank you for listening to Shore Talk. This interview has been recorded and is available on WESR's YouTube page. To schedule a short talk for your community event or organization, call us at 757-787-3200.
or email nancy at wesr.net.